All right, let's go to Kay in Tampa, Florida. What's up, Kay? Um, I'm, well, <laughs> happy belated anniversary. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Of course, of course, of um, course. Uh, how are we doing? I'm doing okay today. Um, good. Been having good days and bad days, but okay. um, today's an okay day. Talk to me about it. What's going on? Well, um, I'm really looking for advice on how I can, my husband and I can best help our son. Um, he is 18 years old, so a legal adult. Um, but he's um, recently been convicted of a federal crime and um, is facing prison time. Um he has not been sentenced yet, um, so the, we don't know exactly what's the crime? what it's going to be. Um, it's dealing with online um, child pornography. Mm. And um, so the attorney has told us, um, basically, with this charge, um, to expect that he would be sentenced to a minimum of five years in jail. Yeah. Um, and obviously then thereafter um, have a lifetime felony conviction and have to register as a sex offender. Yeah. Um, all because um, of <laughs> uh, something stupid. Um, yeah. Which I told them I told all my boys when they turned 18, I can no longer protect you from stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and, and I know you know this, um, but one of the things I think holds back parents in moments like this is um, you really get forced into picking a side. And I want you and your husband as y'all move forward. And we haven't even got to your question yet, but I want y'all as y'all move forward, I want you to work to hold all of this. Okay? And what I mean by that is this. There is no innocent player in child pornography. I, I understand that. I, I know. But I understand I, So I'm, I'm not picking at you. I just want you to hold the whole thing, okay? So I'm not talking down or anything like that. You Just a picture of you and me sitting at a bar, okay? Or we're sitting and grabbing nachos together. It's, I love my son, and I don't want him in jail. And what happened, he can't be around other people. and Right? So it's all of these things all in, and there's kids that were hurt on the other end of this. So it's all that wrapped up into one big, messy, ugh, and that's the path forward when we're grieving this kind of stuff, which just stinks. Um, let, let, but I cut you off. Tell me about um, tell me about how I can help. I'm so sorry y'all going through this. What an absolute mess across the board. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, there's obviously not much I can do legally. Um, and let me let me ask you this. This is a hard question. Uh, I'm going to yeah. put you on the spot. What would you yeah. do? What would I do? Yeah, because um, it's that it's a balance between I don't want my kid in jail, I don't want my kid right. going to prison, and I don't want my kid trafficking child pornography or holding child like hurt hurting children. Like, so what would you do if you could? Um, <laughs> I guess you know I. I'd look for alternatives to jail time, whether that no access to anything online. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, you know, um, he's he's seeing a therapist regularly now. It, you know, and he'd be willing to do that. You know, for the rest of his life to have someone to hold him accountable and that kind of thing. But. Um, you know, he he is on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. He is socially immature. Um, and I think um, he was just, he, it, was, it was his first year at college. He was looking to meet some people and 
ended up in an online chat room and, and ended up texting with somebody and a mm. person sent him some stuff and um you know, when that per- that person was arrested, then they looked at his phone and um, because my son had been in receipt of what that other person had sent him, they came after my son as well. Mm. Um, I don't think he was looking for that. He was looking for, I don't know. Yeah. I, but here, but here um, we find here we find ourselves. Um, how can I help you? I'm just I'm heartbroken by this whole mess. I'm just yeah, ugh. and I mean I I totally get that there's a victim in this, right. um, and um, <laughs> you know sometimes I feel like my son's a victim, um, but I know that there's you know every child that's involved in this they're they're the victim too. Mm-hmm. I get that. Um, I'm looking for advice on how to best support my son, um, through the sentencing phase, through the incarceration phase. Um, and hopefully if I'm still alive when he gets released from prison, that, um, I can help him beyond. And, you know, I... I just, I don't know how to help him Yeah. Um, other than just tell him, hey, we love you. Um, we'll always love you. Mm-hmm. And other than that, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help him look forward um, versus thinking this is, I'm afraid he's going to say this is the end of my life. Mm-hmm. And I might as well be dead. And I'm afraid he's going to do something to hurt himself. Has he threatened suicide before? Um, when he was arrested. Okay. He, he apparently made some comments, so they had some concerns. But, sure. So um, mo- moving forward, here's a couple of things to keep in yeah. mind, okay? Um, the first thing is this. The sooner you and your husband transition in your hearts from we can stop this to we're we're beyond that. (laughs) This is where this is. We're going to make peace with what, what, what's moving forward now. And Mm -hmm. we're not going to make peace. We don't have to like it. We don't, we can, there can be days you wake up and think, I can't believe we're treating my 18 year old baby like this, whatever the thing is. The sooner you make peace with this train is leaving the station then you can be about what comes next. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're trying to drag that train back into the station, it's going to take off. And what it's going to do is just drag you and your husband behind you. A lot of couples split up over things like this because one of them didn't grieve it. One of them grieved too much. The other one thought, and it's sitting down and saying, this is happening. Our son um, was involved, whether we think he was involved five years in jail worth it, he was involved in the worst of the worst of the worst. Mm -hmm. and thank God it got caught early. And in five years, he will, um, what, be 23? He's, he'll be still be a young, young, young child. You know that. And then he'll be out. And then we're going to figure out what comes next there. The word I want you to keep in your mind is connection. And I don't know what that looks like for you and your son. That might be a weekly book study that y'all do together for the next five years. That might be y'all learn something together. Like I'll learn Spanish if you learn Spanish or whatever that thing is. But he's got to know that he's got two people that are walking alongside him, even if they're not physically there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to not double down on what a victim. I can't believe this. Like, nope, you broke the law. And when this person texted, either you asked for it or you said, sure, I'd love to see it. Or you didn't go to the authorities when it got sent to you. Either way, here we are. Right. Here we are. And for a five-year sentence, that, that tells me something else is going on. Either he asked for it or participated in it or there was some back and forth exchanges. Something more than a single text message one way for five years. 
So something else is involved, but that's a, that's a whole other call here. All I have to say is here's where it is. We're going to do these five years with dignity and we're going to learn and we're going to keep our head up and we're going to see what does 23 going to, how is 23 going to be different than 18? And that's the goal that we're shooting for here. And we're going to have good behavior and we're going to honor the young children in our communities. And you and dad are going to have to grieve this like crazy because y'all had plans and y'all had pictures in your head and you'd already thought about what graduation would look like from college. And you, I mean, you have those pictures in your head and you're going to have to spend some time grieving them. You don't want to have this conversation at the supermarket. Hey, how's your son doing? Uh, or at church or at somebody else's birthday party. You don't want to have these conversations and here we are, right? There's yeah. going to have to be a dropping your shoulders and sitting in this for a minute. And by a minute, I mean a season, several months. It's going to hurt. And you'll have to let that process happen. Okay? Mm -hmm. it, if you don't, it ends up in inflammatory responses. It ends up in rage. It ends up in anger. It ends up in blame. It ends up in a broken marriage. It ends up in a mess. Okay? Okay. The single greatest book I've ever read on grief, in my opinion is called Finding Meaning by David Kessler. I'd recommend you and your um, husband read that book together. And a chunk of that book is about David Kessler's work with parents who've lost young children. They've passed away. In many ways, this is a loss for a season. Okay? And grieving it in a similar fashion, I think, would be really, really helpful. Okay. And then connection, 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 as hard as that's going to be. And it's going to be real hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, it may also be worth your soul. Um, the back end of grief is finding meaning. What are we going to do in light of? <sighs> it may be worth... It may be worth down the road, you and your husband finding ways to volunteer, support, care for, love, trafficked children, children who are sexually abused, children who are going through um, deep challenges as not so much a restitution, but a restoration. How can we be a part of the healing in our community that our son helped participate in, some of the hurt? Um, it's similar when a mother of a son kills a young family in a drunk driving accident and he passes away too, mom may get really involved in alcohol regulations and drinking and driving. And I, she's going to be about, dad's going to be about healing the community from something their kid was a part of. And that may be a conversation you and your husband have together. What light can we shine in our community in light of what our son has done so we can model, here's what this looks like. Here's what service and finding meaning looks like. That's going to be down the road a bit. Right now, you just need a season of grief. A season of hand-holding. You can't get in front of him and defend him this time. You know that. You can you can hold his hand and say, you got to go, got to go pay the piper on this one. But mom still loves you and dad still loves you. And we're going to be here with you every step of the way. We're going to be here when you get out. I'm so sorry, Kay. It's heartbreaking all around. It's a big mess for everybody. And... um I'm so sorry you're going through this.